Brazil is the most successful national team of all time. They've won five World Cups, more than anyone, and have also participated in every edition of the World Cup. It wouldn't be an exaggeration to say that you could make five Brazilian 11s with different players and they would all be great. Today, I'm taking on that challenge and I'm bringing you Thrones FC Greatest Brazilian 11 of all time. Goalkeeper, Gilmar. Gilmar is widely remembered as one of the game's all-time greats, winning two World Cups in 1958 and 1962, as well as countless other titles at club level. Gilmar achieved the rare distinction of becoming an idol for both Corinthians and Santos, playing over 300 games for each of the Paulista Giants. While he won numerous titles at Corinthians, it was with Pelé Santos that he would enjoy his greatest spell of success, winning both a Copa Libertadores and Intercontinental Cup twice in his first two years at the club. Effectively a double world champion at both international and club level, Gilmar was without a shadow of a doubt the most successful goalkeeper of his era. Right back, Cafu. With 142 caps, he is Brazil's all-time highest appearance maker and holds the distinction of being the only man to play in three consecutive World Cup finals, doing so as a victor in the 1994 and 2002 editions and as a runner-up in 1998. He started his senior career at São Paulo in 1989 and his six-year stay at the club was immensely successful, winning consecutive Copa Libertadores and Intercontinental Cups in 1992 and 1993. He ended his spell at São Paulo in 1995 and after some stints in Zaragoza, Juventude and Palmeiras, he went to Italy in 1997 to play for Roma and won the arts of the Giallo Rosso faithful with his impressive displays, earning a nickname Il Pendolino, the express train, due to his explosiveness. With the Italian capital club, he won the Scudetto in 2001 before moving on to another Italian giant, AC Milan, in 2003. At Milan, he added the second Scudetto of his career in 2004, two UEFA Super Cups, the Supercoppa Italia in 2004, the 2007 Champions League and the 2007 FIFA World Club Cup. With Brazil, he participated at four consecutive World Cups from 1994 to 2006, captaining his country at the latter two, and set a record of making 21 appearances in total at the World Cup. He was also part of the victorious Brazilian squads at the 1997 and 1999 Copa America, as well as the 1999 Confederations Cup. Center back, Domingos da Guia. Domingos da Guia was one of the most technical center backs in Brazilian history. In the late 1920s, when defenders preferred to just punt the ball away, Domingos was the exception to the rule. So much so that back then, when Brazilians saw someone perform an elegant play, they used to call that a domingada. After some great performances for Bangu, da Guia received his first international cap in a win against Uruguay, world champions at the time. He eventually left his home country to play for Nacional in Uruguay, where he, according to many historians, used to bring thousands of people to the stadium just to see and play. After spending some time with Vasco da Gama and Boca Juniors, he joined Flamengo where he experienced the most successful period of his career. He participated in the 1938 World Cup, where Brazil were eliminated in the semi-finals and in three Copa America editions, but unfortunately, the best he could do was reaching the final in 1945. A master tackler and a good control of the ball, perhaps his quote will make you understand the impact that he had in his time. In the East, the Great Wall of China. In the West, Domingos da Guia. Center back, Lúcio. If Domingos da Guia was a technical centre-back who embodied the expression Jogo Bonito, Lúcio is a perfect partner for him. Famed for his tough tackling, no holds bar style of defending, Lúcio was one of the best defenders in his generation and was very effective at winning back possession in one-on-one -on -one situations. His height made him excel in the air and he was efficient at both defending and attacking set pieces. He broke out in Internacional in Brazil and then left to play for Leverkusen in 2001. Although he was a star in Germany, Bayer Leverkusen bottled an historic triplet, losing the league title, DFP Pokal and the Champions League final in just a couple of days. So in 2004, he left for Bayern Munich, experiencing five extremely successful years, winning almost everything that there was to win. In the 2009-2010, eight seasons after his heartbreak at Leverkusen, he finally won the Champions League, Serie A and Coppa Italia with Jose Mourinho's Inter. With his national team, Lucio was equally as successful, winning 100 caps between 2000 and 2011, two editions of the Confederations Cup, and was an instrumental part of the squad that won Brazil its fifth World Cup title in 2002, where he played every minute of the competition. Left back, Nilton Santos. Nilton Santos is considered one of the greatest fullbacks in the history of the game, however, due to the recency of Roberto Carlos and Marcel, Nilton is left out of many 11s. Well, not this one. 
The encyclopedia, as he was called due to his extensive knowledge of sports, reinvented the fullback role and regularly contributed to attacks with his runs down the wing and scored a memorable goal in the 1958 World Cup against Austria after dribbling across the field before unleashing a shot into goal. He was part of the Brazilian squad for four consecutive editions of the World Cup between 1950 and 1962, winning it in 1958 and 1962. He spent the entirety of his club career with Botafogo, making 723 appearances and won six titles with his hometown club. Nilton ultimately changed the game and deserves to be on this list. Central midfielder, DD. The first man in our midfield, DD was an extraordinary passer of the ball, would run all day and, given his small stature, was incredibly strong. He was also a notable set-piece specialist, getting the ball to drop at just the right time to drop into the goal with a technique called the deadlift. DD was an anchor in midfield for Brazil, playing three consecutive World Cups, 1954, 1958 and 1962, collectively winning the second and third and being considered the best player in 1958. At club level, is considered a legend by the Botafogo fans where he won multiple trophies. He also played for Real Madrid where he won the European Cup in 1960. However, his stint was marked by controversy as Didi and Di Stefano didn't get along, with the latter feeling offended and threatened by the divide in Los Merengues after Didi's arrival at the Spanish capital. Central midfielder, Socrates. Socrates was immensely talented, could read the game very well and was really strong. He was also a rebel who did it all whilst drinking and smoking heavily. An accomplished passer, Socrates could not only create goals but also score them. At club level, Socrates played for Botafogo before joining Corinthians in 1978. He then moved to Italy to play for Fiorentina, returning to Brazil in 1985 to end his career. Part of the 1982 World Cup squad, Regarded as one of the finest collection of footballers of all time, Socrates was the captain and the standout performer. He also managed to juggle qualifying as a medical doctor and being a professional footballer, the perfect example of how skilled and intelligent he truly was. Attacking midfielder, Zico. One of the finest dribblers to ever touch a football, Zeke was also a remarkable passer, goal scorer and free kick specialist. Zeke had exquisite close control and could simply dribble around players as if they were not even there. At club level, Zeke was a key player during Flamengo's most glorious period in their history. Along with many other titles, he led the team to victory in the 1981 Copa Libertadores, the 1981 Intercontinental Cup and four national titles. He's also revered by Udinese fans and Japanese fans after playing for Kashima Antlers in his later years. Although he never won a World Cup, he was part of the 1982 Brazil squad that is regarded as one of the finest collection of football players in history. Winger, Garrincha. Regarded by many as the most skilled football player who ever lived, Garrincha had an incredible dribbling ability. The Brazilian legend was born with a crooked spine and uneven legs, earning him the moniker Bad Legged Angel. But it never showed on the field as he made defenders look foolish with his dazzling dribbling capabilities. Garrincha played a vital role in Brazil's 1958 and 1962 World Cup victories. In 1962, when Pele got injured, Garrincha led Brazil to a World Cup victory with a dominating performance throughout the tournament. He also became the first player to win the Golden Ball, Golden Boot, and the World Cup in the same tournament. At club level, he's considered a Botafogo legend, nicknamed by his fans, the joy of the people. Second striker, Pelé. Edson Arantes do Nascimento is unquestionably the best Brazilian player of all time. He was one of the top goal scorers of all time who made incredible goals look easy to score. He was a complete forward. He could score, add, dribble and build play for those around him as well. He's currently the only player who won three World Cups, conquering his last at a young age of 29. His tally of 77 goals from 92 appearances for Brazil is also impressive to say the very least. A World Cup winner by the age of 17, Pelé quickly became recognized as one of the best in the world. He was even declared a national treasure so that he could not be transferred to a European club. He made football an internationally known sport and turned both Brazil and Santos into the best teams in the world. Of course, he had to be in this 11. Center forward, Ronald. Ronaldo is the greatest striker of the 90s and one of the finest of all time. The Brazilian netted 62 times in 97 games for Brazil, an impressive record and thanks to spells with PSV, Barcelona, Inter Milan and Real Madrid, he was one of the best footballers of his generation. A three-time FIFA Player of the Year, Ronaldo scored goals for fun at the highest level for club and country. He was once the top goal scorer in World Cup history for 8 years with 15 goals and he kept on scoring goals at club level until he retired in 2011. Late in his career, Ronald struggled with his weight and injuries but at the height of his powers he was a terrifying proposition who could outrun, outskill and outscore whole teams. Do you think he could have been the best ever if it wasn't for the injuries? Well in my opinion, it's entirely possible. And that is it for the video, here's my full 11 and also the bench. 
Make sure to leave in the comments your favorite 11 as I read through all of your submissions. Thank you for reaching the end of the video. If you appreciate content like this, maybe you like this video. I'll see you on the next one.